so um allow us to begin so dear colleagues and um both uh, junior and um, those who are, who are men uh, mentees in nursing welcome very much to our first webinar uh, series on um, international opportunities in nursing for registered nurses my name is Ngalula Donald and I'll be your, um, the moderator for today's meeting before I introduce today's today's panel I'd like to bring to you a few uh, house rules kindly please ensure as you enter into the meeting We've got a few order for the sake of order ensure your mic is on mute your video can be on but kindly please ensure your mic is on mute so that we are able to have um, to have uh, what if you're not speaking please ensure your your uh, mic was, is on mute for the sake of order so um today's meeting uh, has been organized for the sake of empowering nurses in especially in kenya I understand we may have other nurses uh, in Nigeria who will be joining us in this meeting. If we'll be able to see them, then we'll appreciate. But um, this meeting is purely uh, organized for the sake of Kenyan uh, nurses who are uh, looking into um, practicing abroad. And uh, with us today, we have uh, Getu Dorondo, who is a nurse practicing in UK, we'll be able to introduce her later. We also have uh, Humphrey Konge, who is a nurse practicing in the United States of America. But before that, allow me to bring um, to bring uh, uh, Margaret. Uh, Margaret, Margaret is, a, is a young nurse and a, and a nurse who values empowerment for nurses. Allow me to bring her so that she can introduce herself and also introduce the concept of this meeting. Wairima, if you can get me, can, can you please welcome and uh, put your mic and video on and uh, uh, address the meeting. Thank you. Can you see me now? Am I audible enough? Yes, you are, Maggie. Oh, so good evening, all. Um, I'd like to welcome you to this session. I didn't really have a big speech prepared for this because I felt like I would miss it because I was traveling a bit. So my name is Wairema Maina and um, I'm the convener for Registered Masses Connect where we want to focus on um, growing together and actually mentoring young nurses to be better than what we have been before. So we'll be having a webinar series. This particular series will have four sessions, starting with today's session. Every session will start on Sunday at 7.30 p.m. So next time, I promise we'll be more organized. And yeah, so today I'd like to welcome all of you Welcome, Gertrude, um, Humphrey, and Donald will be our main speakers. I didn't really have a presentation, but you guys, I know we have been connecting on IG. So I know you have all your questions ready. So to Lisa Zote, and then let's purpose to learn and grow together. That's all for now. Karibuni. Uh, thank you very much, Wairema. Wairema is a good friend we've met. We've been friends for like over three years now, and she's a, she's very supportive for uh, to young nurses. If you're a young nurse who would like somebody to talk to, uh, probably around, about your career progression and things of sort, Mag is always somebody you can always talk to. Uh, you can uh, again reach her through either her phone or Instagram. She's very active on Instagram, and we have a platform on Instagram called. Registered Nurses Connect. If you, after this meeting, you can try to check it out. That is where we interact in. We interact at. Now, uh, we'll be going uh, directly into the order of the day. And this is how we are going to have the order. Our first speaker for the day will be Gertrude Orondo. Then we'll have, um, for, uh, then we'll have our next speaker. Then from there, we'll have a Q&A session. During the presentations and during the speeches, if you have any question, can you please post them in the um, in the comment section? And then, lastly, if in case you'll feel that the question you have must be asked live, either through voice or video, you can raise your hand during the Q and A session. I'll pick you up, and we'll be able to you'll be allowed to ask your question, and your question will be answered live. So allow me to bring uh, uh, to bring the meeting into order with uh, Gertrude Rondo. G Gertrude is uh, is an uh, alumni of um, 
the Jomo Kenyatta University. Um, she practiced here in Kenya at uh, uh, Kiambu, Kiambu County and Referral Hospital before working at, uh, at several uh, uh, facilities in Nairobi, including Nairobi Women's Hospital, if I'm right. She'll be able to tell us. Then she prepared herself for UK. Today she's working in UK. She's doing a her second or third year in the United K uh, in United uh, in UK. She's a registered nurse in UK. Gertrude also runs a, ment a mentorship program, which is called a world class nurse. World class nurse is um is a program that focuses on nurses and also a mentorship for young nurses who are coming in into into nursing. So Gertrude, can you please welcome and uh, tell us about the the journey of a uh, of nursing from Kenya to UK. I know it's something we've done before, but uh, welcome still and share with us the journey, the experience, the Kenya to UK transit, and uh, challenges that you may expect on the way, the requirements that you may need as we prepare to transit from Kenya to the UK. I hope the participants in the meeting have got their pens and their papers and notebooks are ready. Can you, can you, if you can hear me? Yeah, yes, 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 I can hear you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I hope you can equally hear me well. Yes, you can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank everyone and um, the organizers for the invitation um, to speak about my experience. Again, this is something I've done so many times over the years, but um, it's something I, I, I enjoy doing because I believe in sharing information and empowering each other. So um, good evening, everyone, uh, from wherever you're watching from. Um, as Donald has said, my name is Gertrude Orodo. I'm a registered nurse here in the United Kingdom. Yeah, and um, I've been here since 2019. Um, so um, Donald has given a very good uh, preview. So yes, I did my nursing in um, JQuat, and then I did my internship in Kiambu with Humphrey uh in 20 2017 2018 yes uh, kiambu level five then after that um i got my license you know the process your registration and as donald has said i worked in a couple of institutions after that due when you finish internship if if you're a bsn um when you finish internship that's when life begins <laughs> that's when the real life begins because um in my experience there were no jobs i literally dropped my cv in every hospital i went for for all the hospitals and at some point uh, i even told myself okay so nairobi makata let me start going back to my my home my backyard <laughs> so i started applying for jobs in kisumu as well um just trying my luck uh, but fortunately, I got um, locum at KNH. So my first job was labor ward in KNH. And I must say it was a really good experience because I hated midwifery and it was an eye opener that my first job was in labor ward. So um, after that, I started doing locums here and there are different hospitals. You know, you're called for one shift, you go, you get your 2,500 or 3,500. But if you're living in Nairobi um, or you're living in a major town, you know, the cost of rent, the cost of transport, the cost of food, it just really becomes hard. You find yourself living from hand to mouth. So for me, this was the first reason that um, going abroad um, hit crossed my mind because I was like, uh, I can't keep living like this yet there are opportunities out there. So in 2019, um, there was not a lot of information at that time. Um, most people were relying on a van to go to the US, but the UK, there was not so much information. So um, I was fortunate enough uh, to meet like-minded people uh, when I started the process. Um, so I started training for IELTS. I trained for IELTS. I did my IELTS. 
um, I was lucky enough to pass on the first try. I did my CBT. So the more the more I progressed into the journey, the more information I got, and the more people I met who are similar minded. For example, when you go to do the IELTS exam, you're going to meet other people who are doing it. So when you have conversations, they'll tell you, oh, I'm a nurse as well. I'm in this process. Then you exchange contacts like that. When I went to do CBT, the same thing, I met other people and their nurses. So we exchanged contacts and then through and through now I was communicating with these people up until the time that um, <clears throat> I traveled out of Kenya. So at that point, um, there was not much information, like things are really much better right now because there are so many amazing nurses like Humphrey who are just selflessly doing this job of creating opportunities for nurses, answering your questions, you know? So um, I think things have changed in that aspect. So um, in terms of the process and in terms of coming to UK, there has been a lot of changes since 2019. And the first change happened, I think, late 2020, as we joined 2021, where the NMC changed their whole process of, of uh, registering. So the process, the system I used was quite different. So after doing your IELTS, you do your CBT, you start your registration, you come to the UK, you do OSCE, and then you pay for registration. So NMC made, um, a few changes to it, like a few changes, like um, the structure of payment, you have to pay for your registration before you leave Kenya, and then um, submitting your documents. Uh, in 2019, it was analog, you had to post your documents through, what is it called, um, DHL, and then post it as a, you know, as a letter and then wait for their confirmation. But I think right now everything is done online, which is a good thing. But um, when it comes to the UK, the other other major, major change that happened was late last year when um, UK and Kenya signed um, health agreement concerning recruitment. And I know we've seen so much on the news about this. Um, when they when they immediately they signed it, people are saying, oh, why are they doing this? Um, you know, um, uh, Kenya, Kenya doesn't have nurses. So there was a lot of backlash about and and mixed feelings about this and oh as i continue i've just seen someone asking what does nmc stand for so nmc is the nursing and midwifery council it's the equivalent of nursing council of kenya so you know every country has their own governing body so nmc is the nursing and midwifery council of the uk so if you want to work in any country just as you're registered with NCK, you have to register with that with that country's NCK. Let me say that country's their own version of NCK. So before you come to work to the UK, you have to be registered by NCK. Then you have to be registered by NMC, which is the Nursing and Midwifery Council, for you to to have access to work. So <clears throat> um, I was talking about the um, bilateral health agreement so uh, again there has been a lot of mixed emotions and then the government has gotten involved with the whole recruitment process like before it was you yourself um, finding an agency to work with and then just processing everything for yourself but right now i think no, the processes have changed and i know humphrey is more more informed about this more informed about um the changes that have taken place but in my opinion i think um it's a very good thing because it somehow protects us uh because there's a lot of um uh limitations when it comes to recruitment again the who uh they try to regulate the migration of healthcare workers because it doesn't make sense that Kenya is short of healthcare workers and then healthcare workers are moving to the UK. So they normally try to regulate that migration from one country to another, especially from developing countries to developed countries. So when we have that health agreement, it kind of protects, protects us from that, that you know, restriction. Like um, last year, Nigeria was banned from bringing nurses over to the UK. So um, I think that that agreement ensures that Kenya continually is able to 
um, supply nurses to the UK. So I think this is a very good thing for nurses in Kenya. So um, <clears throat> I think that very much summarizes the whole process. But what I want to talk about today majorly is the, the feeling and the emotions around migrating from Kenya to any first world country or any other country, because I believe the feeling and the frustrations are same, whether you move from Kenya to let's say South Africa or you move from Kenya to Namibia or something of the sort. So when you've decided that you want to work in another country, and um, I believe that making the decision is the first big step because many people want to um, move and I know all of us have different reasons for wanting to move. Money is the biggest one. Some people want adventure. Some people want just exposure of being able to travel, you know, that freedom of being able to travel, which is a good thing. So once you've made that decision that this is what you want to do, then I think it is good to find, to surround yourself with like-minded people, you know, attending events like this, following people on Facebook, following people on Instagram, making sure you, you know, find as much information as you can. Because nurses to Mezoya could spoon for Dewa. We just want things brought to us. <laughs> we don't want to find things for ourselves. And um, that's one of the biggest challenges. Like, ukitaka kufanya kazi maju, lazima ujitume. You have to, to, to like, do the work you know you can't just sit and wait that things will fall in your lap you have to find the information you have to follow the right people network with the right people and most importantly you have to do the exams you have to find the money so this process is not very easy starting from the time when you make the decision so staki kukudanganya that it was easy it's going to be easy it's not going to be easy Kwanzia to kufanya the exams, some people fail IELTS on the first try. It's not the end. I know people who've done IELTS six times. Um, I know there's a nurse I work with and she's from, she's from Italy. She's from Italy. Um, she's been here for, I think, three years. She's done IELTS about 10 times and she has not passed. So she can't be a registered nurse because the requirement of NMC is that you have to pass the English exam. So she's still working with us, but as a band four. So um, my point is you might fail IELTS on the first try. You might fail on the second try. There is no limit to the number of times you can do IELTS. So you can't give up. These are some of the challenges that you're going to come across. Luckily, there are people like Humphrey who are training people to do IELTS. So that's very very helpful um something else is the stress right now with the new kenya uk agreement there ha there has been a lot of red tape with nck i have so many people coming to my inbox telling me i'm stuck with the nck i'm stuck with nck when yeah. we did the process it was so straightforward like you'd go submit your papers pay the fee on the same day two days three days later you get your approval and that's it. But right now with the government involved, people are really um, finding a lot of challenges with NCK. So this is something that you have to keep in mind that you're going to meet to challenges here and there, to road bumps, but you can't stop. It's going to be frustrating. But if you set your eye on the goal, whether it's UK or US, be ready to face all these challenges. Um, sometimes um, <laughs> people face challenge uh, as simple as your ATM card refusing to, to make the payments because you need to pay for things online. You need to pay for the exams, for CBT, for registration, all these things you need to pay using your debit card. So people, there are those tiny challenges that can really, really frustrate you. So um, the thing is have your eye on the goal. Um, keep going no matter what, consult, ask around, because these things are as simple as asking. Like what I know, our Kenyan debit, debit cards don't just automatically do online payments. You have to go to the bank, apply for online payment to be approved, and then um, you can access that payment. So if you don't know this, you can get stuck at that stage um, and get frustrated. Yet if you reach out to someone who's done the process, they can simply guide you through this. So <clears throat> my point is challenges ni mingi kwa journey, 
but lazima ujikaze na ujitume and you network. I can't overemphasize the need of networking. So um, when I got to UK in 2019, um, <laughs> there is the excitement of umefika, now you've completed everything, but then there's this thing called culture shock. And let me tell you guys, culture shock was yelewa until you go through it. Like you can't, and you can't really explain, um, there is no single definition of culture shock because it's a mixture of so many things from um how the system works like um <laughs> when 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 i came you know, um, um, I, I had like i really used the bus and the train a lot so you go to the train station where unona two people are passing and tapping 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 and you know it's rush hour imagine like ukiwa kencom at around 7 pm when people are so many and everyone is just going fast so here I was in the train station. I'm just seeing everyone coming, tapping, tapping, tapping. I'm wondering what's happening. Like, how are they getting through? And <laughs> and then um, I think um, that day I got lost in the train station. So I went to speak to them, to those assistants who are there. And this person's accent was so thick, I did not hear a single thing he said. Then I said, please repeat, pardon. He repeated, I didn't hear again. <laughs> like. So I, I said, oh my God, I went, I started going round, going round and round and round. Everyone is passing. So um, I remember that day I just went, found a seat. I wanted to cry. Like, why did I come to suffer like this? Winter is so cold. My fingers are frozen. Oh my God, like culture shock can really do a number on you. So these are things that anticipate when you come like um you'll experience that culture shock at work because the system is different you know um how they do their medication how do they do their care plan is quite different you do diagnosis and all that it's a bit different so <clears throat> prepare yourself emotionally like you're going to have very very hard days of loneliness most Kenyans who've come, I know right now there's a, a huge number of Kenyans who've come, but it's very hard to find yourself in the same town. Like I have my friends to Likwa now internship with Wairema oh and, and Humphrey, but they all went to different towns and that's the other thing. So you might plan that you're going to go to the same town with your friend, and then you find that Yeye Akouko, Liverpool, me, I'm in London, that's like five hours difference so and then people are working 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 so prepare yourself to be lonely prepare yourself to be alone um but the good news in all this is that you adjust time the way they say time heals it's literal in this case with time you get used to the system you get used to your workmates you start hearing the accent better you stop caring whether they hear your accent or not, because that's the other thing. So sometimes you might find yourself talking to a patient, husky, husky, to never mind. Like, let me just do my meds and get on with it. So with time, um, people people change their accent. It's it's a it's a way of coping by the so okay, I change accent. The system have forced you to change your accent in your work with skill. Because you know nursing is um profession where you you talk a lot. So you have to talk to your patient a lot. So badala kushinda apo you have to you know use their terms kidogo and your your work is easier. So I think um that pretty much summarizes my talk. Um, Wairima had mentioned that this is a bit informal, so I've just tried to keep it light. Uh, I'm still happy to answer any questions that you have. I know Humphrey is going to handle the nitty gritties of the process, like what you need for IELTS, what you need for these different things if you want to work in the UK. And again, this is a four week webinar. So I hope you're going to stay tuned so that you can get the most information uh, so through the four weeks and get the uh, most information uh, through the four weeks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, thank you, Felix, for muting. So you can get the most information in the four weeks and you can make your decision on where you want to go to work. So as I end, 
uh, again, I am running a platform called World Class Nurse where um, my goal is just to share these stories I'm talking about to prepare you in your journey of, of coming to the UK. For me, the experience of the transition was really hard. So I kind of know the feeling of moving from Kenya to the UK. So in World Class Nurse, I just focus on how you can transition. I share stories on my experiences in the workplace, day-to-day -day basis. So you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram. I have a YouTube channel that is not so active, but things might change. Uh, and then LinkedIn as well as Get Rid of Rodo. And yeah, I'm happy to take any questions after this. Um, thank you, Donald, back to you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Gertrude. Maybe before we go to Mr. Humphrey, I know uh, this is the, the question that might uh, it might pop up later mm -hmm. um, uh, within uh, most of the participants is that um, in a nutshell, would you be willing to share, uh, share imagine I'm beginning process from A up to Z. How would you describe the process from A to Z just in a nutshell that I start from point this, then this will be the next step, this should be the next step, and this is what now will land you to, to the UK, uh, mm -hmm. quite in a, in a nutshell. So that uh, in case we have got that question in the in the Q&A, it, it should be answered within the presentation. Okay, um, good, good question. So in a nutshell, the first point is making the decision, deciding I want to go to the UK or I want to go to the US. I can never overemphasize the importance of making that decision. Because if you start when you're in doubt, when you're doubting yourself, you won't get so far. And the journey is going to be way more stressful than it would have been. So take your time to make that decision. Don't just do it because everyone else is doing it. Think for yourself, why, why do I want to go to the UK? What's my one reason for going to the UK. Why, why do I want to go? That's the first, very first step. I can never overemphasize the importance of that. The next step is IELTS, which is the English now proficiency, because you have to prove that you can speak English, which <laughs> it's not even important, but oh well, it's the requirement. So IELTS should be the next step of your focus. Um, and I must say there is no specific order, but most people prefer to start with IELTS because it's the, it's the hardest thing in the whole journey. I'm not going to lie to you. Once you do and pass IELTS, everything else is less stressful. So most people choose to start with IELTS because you can get it done with, you can get it out of the way. So when you're doing IELTS, my biggest advice would be to train, get a trainer or join a school like uh, Pascod is teaching IELTS, please, 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 I cannot overemphasize. If you, you train yourself for IELTS, very few people pass with no training because it's um, quite a difficult exam. And I don't want to sugarcoat it because it would be lying to you if I sugarcoat it. So once you've decided you've done your IELTS, you've passed, uh, when you're coming to the UK, the next step now is NMC registration. And um, something else I missed to mention is applying for a passport. You cannot travel anywhere without a passport. So if you don't have a passport, that is one of the things you need to do in good time. We know our Kenyan systems, how one day they are working, the next day they're not. So um, apply for your passport in good time so that you have, when you've done your IELTS, you have your passport because NMC registration, you have to do it with your passport as well. So you've decided, you've applied for your passport, you've done IELTS, now you're doing NMC registration. When you're doing NMC registration, um, there's an exam you need to do in Kenya. It's called computer-based competency test, which is sort of like um, a an, an nursing exam to just prove that, you know, unailewa kazi yako. So CBT is not as hard, to be honest. It's not as hard as IELTS, but still you can't just go blind. You need to prepare for it as well. There's a lot of material um, online for, for practicing for CBT. Again, many schools that offer IELTS will also offer CBT training. So that's a good thing. So you've done your CBT. Now you submit your documents. 
some of the documents you need are like your your birth certificate i know you need your birth certificate um you need a passport you need your nck registration and not it's nck registration and not license so nck registration and then you need your college or um university certificate um depending with where you studied you need that previously they wanted transcripts i don't think they do that anymore so you need to have these documents handy if you don't have your birth certificate know that this is something you're going to need through and through when coming abroad so prepare it in good time um then uh once you've started your nmc registration um you now go for an interview and um this interview again this is the point where you need an agency because the agencies usually link you to the hospitals um and for the interviews so um if not if you google even right now like in where i'm working in my hospital there are so many vacancies you can just google the name of my hospital it will bring for you the vacancies and you can apply but this process is not as quick as when you work with an agency so you need yourself an agency for the uk there are many agencies um but again humphrey uh through passcode and i i think they're an agency so you can get in touch with an agency uh, do your interview then after the interview there there are a couple of documents you need to to have that um, they, 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 are, they are going to request for, including your immunization record. So if you don't have your immunization record, this is something, again, you need to think about because they want to see um, evidence of immunization that you are immunized against TB. Uh, these people in the UK are what really, really scared of TB. Immunization record, they want a record. <laughs> Thankfully for me, my mom is very good at record keeping. So I had, that card from Utotoni. If you don't have it, um, you can try to. Unajua <laughs> Kenya, you can. <laughs> I, I know all of <laughs> you understand. <laughs> yeah, but those are some of the documents they are going to need you to have, like your immunization record. Um, and once you you submit all these documents, um, everything else is sorted out. Something else you need to note your referees these people when you apply for the job chau kweli they will contact your referee they will they will send that email they want your referee to to <clears throat> refer you so when you're doing your application have in mind reliable people because if you said you worked in knh like me i said i worked in knh i work in kiambu i worked in don't say so many hospitals because they, they want three years experience so in three years if say you've worked in five hospitals please just choose two or three if you put five or six for the three years they're going to need referees for all these six hospitals so you have to go back and forth with people please do this please do this it's not a very easy process so when you're choosing your referees think of someone who is very reliable someone who you can harakisha kidogo like you can tell please please um send this in for me because they will not progress until they receive your referees so as i sum this all up again for the whole process you need money so you have to be financially prepared as all these things no one is doing for if for free all these things you need to pay for including your training your ielts exam your cbt your passport so you need um some cash with you so that you you can you know have a seamless process when you have money you can just uh, flow through the process but don't be pressured because it, like i think the uk process needs about a hundred thousand when i did it i used about roughly 70 80 000. things have changed now because the prices of things keep going up so with time the prices of things keep going up so you need this money but you don't need it as a lump sum because let's say you do your IELTS training for two months then you do your IELTS then you do CBT the next month then you start NMC registration so the money is in bits so you don't need to have that you have a hundred thousand in your bank account if you can well and good but uh, you can pay in bits and pieces so that summarizes the whole process um deciding IELTS, um, CBT and NMC registration, interview, 
and then yeah after the interview you've passed they're going to organize for your visa they'll organize for your flight you just need to pack your bag and be ready, ready. to travel Donald, back to you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, I hope you can hear me now. Thank you very much, uh, Gertrude. That has been quite insightful. I hope those ones who are within in the meeting, you are noting down at any point, if you, uh, uh, if you have any point of question, Please post your questions at the in the chat box. Your questions will be handled uh, towards the end of the meeting after the second presenter. So thank you very much, Gertrude. Meanwhile, I'd like to remind us again, my name is Ngalula Donald, the president for Kenya Student and Novice Nurses. I know we have attendants from Nigeria. We have friends from Nigeria who have also attended the meeting. Uh, welcome very much. And now we are going to do our second presenter even as, uh, as we gather our questions and concerns. Our second presenter is Mr. Humphrey Konge. As you've heard, he attended uh, uh, the same internship center with Nas Gertrude in Kiambu uh, County Referral Hospital. He is a registered nurse for US and also uh, he also trains nurses for IELTS, other POSE islets. I don't know which is the correct uh, pronunciation, he also trains nurses for IELTS and also for NCLEX exams, basically for, for you to be registered in the United States of America. Now we have heard about the process of going to the United, uh, United Kingdom. We'd like to hear about the process of going to the United States of America. What do you need? What's the process? What are the issues of immunization? And what are the cost implications? So, Mr. Humphrey, kindly please welcome. I know you have a presentation that you might want to present. Uh, kindly please welcome and also uh, make your presentation. Okay. Thank you, um, Donald. Uh, am I, can you hear me clear? Yes, you're very clear, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, I want to greet you this evening. My name is Humphrey, as it has been said. And um, Hi, Gertrude. Long time. I'm happy to see you here. Yes, as Gertrude Hi. said, uh, yeah. yeah, actually, we attended the same uh, internship center and yeah. um, we really worked very well. I remember some days when how, I how did not, uh, make it. It turns out that all of you don't remember you went to the same internship. We know, I yes, remember. You know, we know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, what, guys? But Wairima, yeah. Wairima was our representative, I think, Kama? Yes. No, um, I was never a rep. Oh, okay. The, the other lady <laughs> that you are in the UK, Kiri. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, Wairima was also in Kiambu with us. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, so um, I have a presentation to make. First of all, I want to introduce the organization I work with. That is Passcode Global Consultants. And then after that, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, nursing in the US. Uh, but before I begin the presentation, I would like to uh, say something that I have seen in chat. Someone was uh, emphasizing that uh, agencies were banned by the Kenyan government to recruit nurses for the UK, which is true. Uh, but actually, when the government entered into an agreement, the GOK entered into an agreement between the two governments, what happens is that the government of Kenya is going to choose the agencies they are going to work with, and the process is ongoing. So if you look at the National Employment Authority website, you're going to see so many agencies that are allowed to recruit, um, I mean, to participate in the labor movement. Uh, that is, they can recruit people from Kenya to other countries. But the government in the last press briefing, they said they are going to give nurses the agencies they are going to be working with. Again, as Gertrude was explaining, if you apply uh, for a job in the UK directly to a hospital or maybe like to the NHS, the moment you are accepted for the job, the NHS is going to give you an agency to work with from the other side. Whether it is allowed by the Kenyan government or not, it is already allowed by law according to the listing that was done. 
Otherwise, uh, this is a series of topics. And in our next topic, we are going to be talking about that, the Amber List and how it works, the pathways that you have for those who want to go to practice in the U U UK. So we are going to be looking at those pathways in, the, in our next presentations. Uh, we can't be able to do everything in one meeting. So, and there, there is actually a lot to be done. If I start right now explaining the process of going to the UK and breaking it into steps, and looking at what comes in every step, maybe I would take a whole two hours. If I start explaining the process of going to the US and uh, breaking every step uh, into the sub steps that are involved, maybe I'm going to take around even three hours. So that's why we decided to do a series of webinars so that we can be able to explain um, everything that nurses need to know. There's a lot of information. And um, as my colleague started by saying, this information uh, was not, has not been available so much for us. And actually you realize that with information, uh, many people are able to make a decision and to empower themselves. So without much ado, I would like to uh, go to my presentation. I don't know whether Donald, you can be able to enable my screen so that I can share my presentation. Please. Um, try to share, then I'll be able to enable. Okay. From my end. Okay. Yes, just try to share, then uh, it will give me a pop up that I'm able to allow yeah, you to share. I've, I've tried sharing and uh, it's telling me the host has uh, disabled. <laughs> okay, just a minute. Meanwhile, you can continue uh, uh, sharing the insights you have as I make the meeting controls. All right, all right. Yeah, so I would like to uh, introduce to us or to just talk about uh, the organization I work with, which is called Passcode Global Consultants. Uh, Passcode is an organization that uh, exists with one mission and one vision. And the vision for Passcode is actually to become a leading gate pass for global nursing practice and experience. The reason for this is because the demand for nurses worldwide is very high right now. Actually, sometimes when we talk about the demand for nurses, we talk about the UK, the US, then some people go ahead and talk about Canada, others talk about Australia. Some people may add Qatar, Dubai, New Zealand, uh, Republic of Ireland, but you'll note that almost in the entire world, the demand for nurses is very high. Even in this country of ours, in, in, in this country, in Kenya, the demand for nurses is still high. Maybe what might be the difference is the remuneration and uh, the conditions of work. So passcode exists to be able to, um, to, to, to uh, bridge the gaps in terms of enabling nurses to practice abroad. Because when we talk about practicing in the US or the UK, for example, we are talking about exams that have been uh, have to be to be to be passed. We are talking about IELTS. We are talking about NMCCBT. We are talking about NCLEX RN. Without you passing those exams, you cannot go to those countries. And without um, an organization that can be able to organize such, then a problem comes in. Uh, so our mission at Passcode is to inspire and empower nurses towards the exploitation of global nursing opportunities. Actually, according to research, Kenya is one of the countries that produces the best nurses in the world. If you go to any part of the US today, you will find Kenyan nurses practicing there. If you go to any part of the UK today, you will find Kenyan nurses practicing there. If you come to Kenya, we have so many nurses with a zeal, with a potential, with uh, some of them even have finances, but maybe because of one reason or another, they have not been able to go there. Others, maybe it's because they don't have the right information. They might be having information and a lot of information for that matter, but maybe they don't have enough information or the right information. So passcode exists to be able to bridge that gap, to provide information. And that's why if you check in our website, our core values are honesty, empathy, boldness, teamwork, and humanity. So 
we have a wide range of uh, services that we do provide and uh, we endeavor to provide them in the best uh, manner possible to ensure that our pass rates are high and also to give you value for money to ensure that when you come to train with us you're able to get what you need because we understand that you have invested in the process you have taken time to make that decision and uh, of course you need to achieve your goals so we do offer IELTS training and our IELTS training actually is offered in two modules whereby we have uh, the physical module and the online module so the physical module is offered in our offices which are located at which is uh, located at Nairobi city center at Mamangina street in a building called Jubilee exchange house um for the people who would like to come and take IELTS in our organization if you want to do the physical mo mo module you can come uh, anytime from 8 a.m to 5 p.m you can take your classes and you don't have to have specific times to take your classes if today you are available during the morning you can come in the morning and take your class if the next day you are available during the afternoon you can come in the afternoon and take your class we also have the online module uh, for those who would want to take uh, the online module because of one reason or another, we usually do arrangements. We have a class in the evening, but sometimes because of uh, the nature of our jobs, we do arrangements so that uh, we can be able to fit in uh, in your schedule and we can assist one another. Because we understand that there are people who have uh, very tight schedules and they also, want, they also have goals. They would also want to go to the UK, they would also want to go to the US so we are very flexible and we do we do understand so the other service that we provide is uh, IELTS mocks and uh, we are actually emphasizing on this service very much because we have quite a number of uh, candidates who prefer to do uh, self-training for IELTS there are some challenges that are associated with uh, self-training people have done it and they have passed others have done it they have failed for one reason or another. Others have trained elsewhere. They have failed for one reason or another. Sometimes uh, there are many factors that come into play. So in IET mocks, what we do is that when you're coming to do the mocks, you come do the mocks for the four papers, that is speaking, uh, listening, writing, and reading. And once you have done the mocks, we analyze the mocks. We tell you um, your strengths, we also tell you your weaknesses and we review with you what you need to do from the day you have done the mock until you do your exam. And we have realized that when people come to do mocks, even when they are training with other institutions, it benefits them a lot to be able to identify some of the things that they need to correct before their exams. Um, another uh, service we do offer is NMCCBT training. Um, this one uh, does not take long, like IETS. I forgot to tell you that IETS takes, the minimum you can take is uh, four weeks, depending on your schedule. But of course, there are those who come and uh, tell us they want to take the minimum time possible, maybe because they have booked their exam or different reasons. So we try to adjust. We don't like uh, forcing our program just the way it is, but we always want to be flexible. So. After IELTS, uh, you can enroll for NMCCBT. You do your revision and then uh, you take your exam. We also offer a service called CGFNS applications. CGFNS is a body in the US that uh, certifies your documents. CGFNS will certify your license and confirm to the Board of Nursing where you are applying that indeed you are a registered nurse in the Republic of Kenya. Of course, they do it worldwide. Uh, they will also verify your certificates from the school where you trained in, whether it's a KMTC or a university. They have links for all the institutions that train nursing in this, in this country and actually uh, worldwide. They actually even know the person who signs a certificate, so you can't fake. So we do those applications because they have a profile. You have to create an account. It involves um, uh quite a number of things and we do assist people to do that and from there we also guide people on nclex application uh nowadays you have realized that many people want to do uh, the nclex process 
NCLEX is the exam that people do to get registration in the United States. So if you want to sponsor yourself for the NCLEX process and you want to do NCLEX by yourself, you come to our institution, we are able to help you, we are able to guide you and to help you to apply. You do your NCLEX. If you just want to do your NCLEX, then you apply with an, another agency. We don't have a problem with that. But if you come to our institution, you tell us you want to be assisted to do the NCLEX, we will assist you. Now, the other service we do provide is uh, NCLEX RN revision course. Um, as opposed to other exams, uh, the NCLEX exam is a bit tough because the level of questions is uh, high, quite high. Sometimes actually they can be very difficult, difficult and demanding. Like there is an exam for those of you who have done the NCLEX process, there is a, a question, a type of a question that is called SATA, select all that apply questions. Those questions can be very traumatizing sometimes. So when we call it the NCLEX course, we are calling it the NCLEX course because actually you have to do it for a period of around uh, minimum maybe three months uh, to four months. Some people do it for even six months because you have to go back to your nursing books from where you did your anatomy. You read all the integrities. You also have to be prepared on the strategies of answering NCLEX questions. And uh, when it comes to body systems, you have to review them system by system. When it comes to pharmacology, you have to go to the drugs, understand the um, various aspects of drugs, uh, like the pharmacokinetics, what not, side effects, uh, what the drugs do to the body, what the body does to the drugs. You go very deep to the integrities. So when it comes to the NCLEX, actually, it's not just revision that we do. We do a course for those who want to do NCLEX. So we do a course whereby we do uh, meetings, calls via Zoom, uh, also keeping you on toes via WhatsApp. We give you uh, the required materials. We also advise you which materials you need to buy as additional materials, depending on your scores as per our assessment. So um, it's a demanding course. And as my colleague said, of course, if you want to do this process, you have to be decided and you have to give it your all. Uh, Nikisema kwa Kiswahili, lazima ujitume believe you. Um, the other thing we do is uh, we assist uh, people with uh, professional uh, resumes because these institutions that you are applying for, maybe in the UK or in the, U or in the US, they take things seriously. So if you have a resume that doesn't look well, doesn't look good, they may think that you are not a serious person. So when a, a customer comes to us or a candidate, we want that candidate to excel. So we advise you on how to do it if you want to do it, or you, if you want us to do it for you, we do it for you. Now, there's another service we provide, which is called Global Nursing Consultations. Now, this service involves giving you information. You realize that making a decision to be able to go outside the country is not easy. Making a decision to migrate, for example, for those, you, those of you who are in families, you have a spouse, you have a child, or maybe children. Making a decision to migrate is not easy. And uh, we have options. Maybe you want to migrate to Canada. Maybe you want to migrate to the US. Maybe you want to go to the UK. Others would want to go to Australia and other countries. So we have this service whereby you book a consultation with us. You come, we talk, or we do a Zoom. You tell us your situation. You tell us your preferences. Then we assist you to make a decision according to the information we have for the different countries. So in our institutions, we have people who um, concentrate on researching, emerging issues, what is changing, so that we can be able to advise our customers. Because we realize that once someone has already um, committed into family, some of these decisions can be a bit hard. So people want to know, can I go to the UK with my family? Can I go to the US with my family? So if I am a nurse, my spouse is not a nurse, will my spouse uh, get a job? What kind of a job are they going to, uh, to get? Uh, what amount of, of time uh, are we, is, is going to elapse before they get a job? Or maybe what goes into it? What kind of resources are we going to, uh, to put into it? 
Again, people want to know, when I want to do the US process, how much money do I need? When I want to do the UK process, how much money do I need? So um, if you look at uh, countries like the US and the UK, those developed countries, they value information a lot. People value information a lot. People enroll in courses. If you look at uh, some of the platforms online that provide courses like Udemy um, and others, you realize that subscriptions for those courses are uh, concentrated in the developing countries because people value information. Uh, in Africa, we have a, a small problem because sometimes you don't want to pay for information. And I want to tell you guys, it is very, very important to pay for information, get the information, and you can make a decision out of um, information. When you make an informed choice, it's a bit hard for you to make a mistake. Uh, sometimes we have seen people, uh, people have come to our offices when they, they, they are at the blink of making a mistake. You find that uh, someone is a nurse, maybe their spouse has a very good uh, job in Kenya, but may, or maybe a very good business in Kenya, but maybe they, they are being pressured maybe by their colleagues that they want to go to practice outside, but maybe they have not thought about the implications even to their spouse. Uh, so when, you, when we are talking about nursing opportunities abroad, we do not mean that everyone must go abroad. Uh, I, I mean, must go to practice outside. So we want to help people with information, enough information so that when people are making a decision, they can make an informed decision. Uh, so that is uh, all about passcode. But of course, I will mention that uh, we have a phone number you will see that phone number in our website, but maybe I can mention it here. Our contacts, we can be reached through plus 254-727-570-601. Uh, sometimes uh, there have been issues uh, in the internet. They are fraudsters. So we have only one official number. Uh, you can also use our email, which is info at passcodeconsultants.com. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, and our Facebook page reads Passcode Global Consultants. We, also, we are also in Instagram. In Instagram, our handle is uh, Passcode Global Consultants. And uh, we have a YouTube channel whereby we do post some of our videos. Uh, and we are going to be active in it in the coming days because we have realized that people need information and uh, we are up to the task. So that's all about a uh, passcode. I know there will be questions and we are prepared to answer the questions. So uh, moderator, if you can allow me, I will just uh, go to the next presentation, which is about nursing in the USA. Yes, please, can you go on? Because uh, I'm trying to activate so that to allow you to share your screen. Okay. But somehow I'm having a, a little bit of difficulties from my end on the settings. But I guess you are still audible enough and quite um, elaborate. And uh, you're, somehow you've mastered the art of catching the attention of attendees. So fair enough, you are good to go on. Thank you very much. Um, I will now go to my next presentation, which is nursing uh, in the USA. Uh, quite a challenge that I was not able to share my screen because there are some things I wanted really to share with the uh, with, uh, attendees. Now, um, when you talk about the United States of America, this is a country that... Uh, Mr. Ngararo. Make her cost so that she can, he can share his screen. Okay, Galula, if you can hear one participant is saying that if you make me a co-host, I can be able to share the screen. Actually, maybe you can make me a host for a, a while, then I share my screen with the... Uh, Galula, if, if you can hear me. Yes, I've already made you a host. Now I think you can Thank share you. your screen for this moment, you. then you'll return the rights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So can everyone be able to see the PowerPoint? 
please, someone confirm to me if you can see the PowerPoint. Uh, yes, yes, it's audible. Yes, it is clear. Are, uh, okay, can you please uh, make them to be on slideshow? All right, all right. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, maybe I can mention something small as I go to the next presentation, which I was not able to mention. Um, that's me there. I teach uh, IELTS. I also do NCLEX. Now, uh, this uh, webinar is a series. We are going to be doing others. Now, the, the first webinar which we are doing today is an introduction. So actually what we are touching on are just introductions. We know there are so many questions and uh, the questions will determine our next webinar. If you look here, you can see that I've listed this one as topic three and this one as topic two. Actually, it's not a mistake. I just exchanged when I realized that the next, uh, the next webinar should be about the process of going to the UK because people have been asking so we can exhaust it in the next meeting. And that is when we will be talking about the AMBA list, listing and what it means for the affected countries. So we are going to be dis to, to discuss that. Uh, so the global nursing shortages versus demand might come as number three. And also uh, topic four IET strategy is list listed as a tentative topic because according to the questions that are going to come, we might decide to do to exhaust on the nursing process for going to practice in the USA. So I needed to elaborate on that. Now, if you look at uh, the chart that I have here, uh, which comes from the World Economic Forum in 2022, they are saying that the world needs 6 million nurses by 2030. This is not a small number to achieve. If you are a nurse today, the world needs you not only this country, of course this country needs you, but the world needs you. But no one can make uh, the decision for you on where you want to practice. It is you who will make the decision on where you want to practice. So since the world needs you, you can decide to go and practice in South Africa. You can decide to go to Namibia. You can decide to go to Egypt. Um, Qatar is there. We have our nurses there. Dubai is there. Uh, Australia, UK, US. So it's, it's upon you to make that decision. Wherever you want to go, nurses are needed there. The other day I was talking to my friend who is in Germany and uh, he's not even a nurse, but he was being approached uh, to link some nurses from Kenya to go and practice in Germany. So the world really needs nurses. And uh, I believe you are up to the task as I am. Okay. I would like to mention our sponsoring organizations. The first one has been mentioned. The second one, uh, Register Nurses Connect. Please, nurses, if you have not uh, connected with Register Nurses Connect on Instagram, do that. There's a lot of information that is passed to nurses that can be of help to you. World-class nurse uh, mentorship, they have a YouTube channel. They also have a website. Please check their website, check their YouTube channel. They have a lot to do with the nursing practice in the UK. And they are doing a good job, an awesome job actually. I talked about those, so I'm not going to repeat them. That map is just showing our location at uh, Nairobi city center, uptown. We are at a place where uh, that is very conducive for learning. Those are our contacts. Uh, perhaps you may need to note them down. Now, let me go to nursing in the USA. USA is a big uh, nation, which uh, we may not even be able to call it country because uh, it's a country with a population of um, 360 million people and actually increasing. And when we talk about the USA, we talk about the Americas. So Canada is not very far from the USA. Fortunately, actually, they take the same exam. If you do the NCLEX RN exam, you can practice in the USA. You can practice in Canada with it. And recently, Australia is in the process of you, um, are doing processes so that they can also start uh, using the NCLEX RN exam as their entry exam for nurses. 
So when we look at uh, just a summary of some facts, we can see that uh, the median salary, that is in 2020, median pay for nurses in the USA uh, was 75,330 per year. In the UK and also in the USA, you realize that salaries are usually um, um, talked about in terms of uh, per annum. So this is around, uh, if you divide this figure by 12, that is per month, then you, you convert it into Kenyan shillings, that's around more than 650,000 Kenyan shillings. Okay, some people may think that this is a joke or a, I don't know, a marketing gig or something like that. But I can tell you this uh, information is from United States Bureau of Labor and Statistics. And one thing I know about the United States, they are very serious when it comes to information and statistics. They are very good when it comes to data. They col collect data, analyze data, and use data to make decisions and to advise the public and to advise their institutions. So this information is there in their website. You can go and check. The average pay per hour is at 6.22. So if you convert this one into Kenya shillings, you just need to multiply it by 10. And that is what you'll be paid if you go to the United States. But of course, as I'll be telling you later, it will depend with the pathway that you have used to go to the US. So I'll not be exhausting, of course, this is an introduction webinar. Typical entry-level education, bachelor's degree. Uh, this is uh, the most common uh, entry-level for registered nurses in the USA. Uh, but uh, of course, if you hold a diploma in nursing and you want to go practice in the USA, you can do the take the NCLEX RN and you will go to the USA as a registered nurse, just the same way with a, a, someone who holds a degree. So when you get there, you can decide to do a program they call RN to BSN program. And the good thing in some universities, you will just do this program online. And actually, after doing this program online, it takes around just one year, and you get your credentials to be a BSN. So you'll just be doing it as you practice. Uh, we have some people in our program that we were helping, and uh, they graduated. We are very happy and honored to have helped them. Now, uh, work experience in related occupation, none, of course. On the job training, um, None, not very much, but sometimes it happens. Of course, you will be supported a lot when you go to the USA. Number of jobs, uh, 2020, uh, 3 million, uh, 080, 100. Now, look at this. This is very exciting. Number of jobs for registered nurses in 2020. So even if you take the entire nursing population of Kenya, population of Kenya, the registered nurses in Kenya, you go take them to the USA, they cannot fill the available uh, vacancies. Employment change 2020, 2030. Uh, 276,800. So the USA needs a lot of nurses, a lot of nurses. And as we proceed, nurses are uh, aging in the USA. Um, schools, because of some reasons, are not admitting as many as they should because of some reasons various reasons which you cannot exhaust right now. So that tells you the demand is there today and the demand will be there tomorrow. So if you have not prepared yourself today and you would want to go and practice in the USA, you are not late. Let's look at the process of becoming a USRN. Now this is just um, in a nutshell, I'm just going to uh, like uh, just summarize and I want to summarize three pathways that you can use to go to the USA as a nurse. Now, the first pathway, uh, that's pathway three, sorry. So pathway one is whereby you go to the USA with an agency, pre-NCLEX. So pre-NCLEX, I'm dividing this process into two phases. Phase one is between now and when you do your NCLEX and you pass. Actually, let's not say when you do your NCLEX. Let's say the period between now and when you pass NCLEX. Phase two is when you pass your NCLEX to immigration, that is when you get to the USA. So now, when you join an agency right now, what is the process? The first thing 
is the will. Gertrude talked about the will and the decision so much, so much that I cannot emphasize. Making a decision to migrate is not easy. There are factors to consider. If you are in a relationship, for example, and maybe your partner doesn't want you to migrate, it's something that can hinder you. If you have some family ties or maybe some things you want to do in the family before you migrate, it's also a factor that you can consider. So there are many things that comes in making a decision. But what I know out of experience, one of the things that determines a lot whether someone will make a decision to go to the US, UK, or to practice outside generally is themselves. You are self, you determine a lot whether you want to go outside and practice, because this is not something that you can be pushed by someone. The process can be tough. Doing these exams, running up and down uh, can be tough. And therefore, that is why I've listed the will and the decision as the first two steps. You have the will, you think about it, you seek information, then you do what? You make a decision. Once you make a decision, you apply with an agency before you do your NCLEX. The agency will assist you to do most of the things. They will assist you with the CGFNS application. Some agencies will pay for you, others will not pay for you. Even if the agency pays for you part of the money, in this process, you are going to use money. Money is required. Like there is no, they have not heard of an agency that pays a, a, a NCK verification, which is 12,000 shillings. So you have, of course, to arm yourself with money. Now, after applying with a, a CGFNS, actually at this point, you start uh, revising for the NCLEX. In fact, the moment you make a decision, you want to go to the USA, you start revising for the NCLEX because NCLEX is very extensive. They can ask a question from anywhere in your nursing school. So you, when you make the decision, even without the money, you start revising. So now when you file with the CGFNS, they are going to give you a report, which is called the CES report, Credential Evaluation Report. I talked about that. Now that report will enable you to um, be verified by the board and you will be given a document called the ATT, uh, that is authorization to test. Now that document again will allow you to apply for the NCLEX RN exam. And when you apply for the NCLEX RN exam with the Pearson view, you are going to take your exam in India uh, or South Africa. If you want to go to London also, you can go to London and to take your exam. There are various centers, but the nearest center to our place is India and South Africa. Currently, most people are going to South Africa. Um, so if you go, you, you take your exam and pass, uh, well and good. You will feel very good. Uh, congratulations to you in advance. Some people take exam when they pass, they think the next day they will be in America. And they start actually speaking words like, America, here I come. Now, but uh, after taking your exam, there are some other things that come up. The immigration process is not short. Um, the shortest maybe it has taken some people before COVID is around six months. After COVID, the process has had some, some challenges because of embassies being closed. But uh, as we have seen at the, be to us, uh, the beginning of 2022, things are opening and we believe that uh, we are going uh, towards better days. And uh, the people who have passed their NPLEX waiting to go, to go to the US are, are going to go to the US very soon. So that's part way one. You are going to the US uh, with an agency before you do your NCLEX. So the agency helps you to do your NCLEX. In the next, uh, in the next uh, topics, we are going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of uh, this. So I cannot exhaust that one now. Let's go to the next pathway. Now the next pathway, pathway two, of course you must have the will, uh, then you make the decision. This one is whereby you go to the USA, uh, you apply with an agency after you have done your NCLEX. You sponsor yourself for the NCLEX process. That means you don't apply you with an agency before you do your uh, NCLEX exam. So we have assisted people to sponsor themselves. It's called self-sponsored program. You pay the money uh, for the CGFNS yourself, 
you pay the money for the board, you buy your materials, some of the materials is available freely online, um, then you pass the exam. Now, when you pass the exam, that is now the point of applying with an agency. Because when you apply with an agency at this point, the agency will be able to do your immigration process. The immigration process for the USA is a bit tough. Uh, they have conditions. Uh, the, the employer who is the sponsoring organization, this can be an agency or a hospital. There are some conditions they must meet with the, with the uh, immigration department in the USA. So that is the reason now here, you will have to apply with, an hospital, with a hospital or an agency. Now, for those people who have done uh, NCLEX and they have passed, we usually advise them to apply with agencies that are called direct hire agencies. This is because direct hire agencies will be able to link you directly with a hospital. That means you will be given a higher rate. Of course, we know there are agencies that will come to you. You have already done a lot of work. You have passed your NCLEX, you are a USRN. Then they come with a bonus, a bonus like 200,000 Kenyan shillings. When someone has done this process and they are in Kenya, sometimes they, they are a bit drained in terms of finances. So you might jump, take the 200,000 Kenya shillings. But of course, the rate they will give you, uh, that is per hour rate. Then uh, that is where they are going to get uh, back their money and maybe get more. So when you have toiled and moiled, you have done the end clicks. You have already done the bunch work. You have already done a lot. And that is the time you should think about direct hire agencies. And we are going to be talking about that in the next uh, webinars. Now, pathway three. This pathway is not very common uh, because uh, quite a number of people who go to the US, they want an employment-based visa. Pathway one and pathway two that I've talked about will give you an employment-based visa, which is almost equivalent to a green card. Because you, you will be sponsored to go to the USA as a permanent resident. Um, your spouse and your children who are at the age of 21. Pathway two, the same. Now, pathway three, this one, uh, maybe I may say is a bit, a bit favors people who are not in uh, marriages. Eh? Uh, people who want to go to study. Maybe you are a registered nurse here in Kenya. You don't have anything to hold you. You can, uh, if you don't want to wait for the process, because the process for going to the USA sometimes can be even two years or even more, somewhere around there, from 18 months, somewhere there. So if you don't want to wait for such uh, long or short time, you can go to the USA through education. You can apply for masters, you can apply for uh, RNBSN program. Then uh, once you go there, you will get, of course, a student visa. Once you go there and you have your nursing credentials, you continue with the process as you learn. Well, then you take your NCLEX RN from the other side. The moment you take your NCLEX, you pass your NCLEX, you'll be given now, you approach a hospital, then the hospital will sponsor you and uh, you become a USRN and you start practicing there. So those are the three pathways that someone can use to uh, go to the USA. I believe you're making notes about that. Now, the drawback for this is hard to go with family immediately because you will not be having an employment-based visa. I saw it important to mention that, even though this is introduction, we cannot go to the nitty gritties of that as at now. Now, why practice in the USA? There are so many reasons why people want to practice in the USA. Again, this one being an introduction meeting, I cannot go to that because it, there's a lot to talk about uh, in the same. Uh, for example, sorry, I don't know what happened to my screen. Let me just get to that slide. Okay, so what about uh, that dollars per hour? What is that dollars per hour right now? You can say that one times 10 or just go online, say KSH to USD, convert, respect, RN. When you see someone calling themselves UKRN, USRN, it's not, not just a title. Nurses are highly respected in uh, the USA, in the UK, 
and uh, the work you do is respected. Actually, in a country like Canada, no one minds what you do in terms of looking down upon people. In Canada, even someone who is just um, um, a driver or something like that, they are given the respect that they deserve. So nursing in the USA is a highly respected profession. Why, when you get there, because I, I know some of the people, I believe some of the people, uh, quite a number of people in this webinar would want to go to the USA or the UK. Once you get there, you will remember they Um, hello, I don't know if I'm the only one who's not getting you, uh, Mr. How uh, Nasamfri, or um, I'm the only one. Let's hello, but I, I can't get him as well. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So I'm um, I'm trying to get back to him, even as uh, he's trying to reconnect back, probably. He already told me that he has a, an issue with um, with his network, but I hope you are all learning and um, making progress with this. So, uh, fine. even as, as you wait for him to, to come back, I know uh, the meeting is already, um, time has already, we've already eaten out of time, but I'm uh, going direct to the questions. And I know as Gertrude, Gertrude from UK is here with us. She's going to answer a few questions as we wait for Humphrey to come in. Some of the questions that uh, people have posted in have already been answered by Mr. Nas Humphrey. And I'm really going to encourage you as you introduce yourselves to always introduce yourself the title Nurse. For example, I am Nurse Donald. So um, um, maybe this one is directed to Nas Gertrude. And uh, somebody asked this question that, um, how much does one pay for IELTS exam? Uh, some people try to answer them in the chat box, but it will be good to hear it from you. Uh, I also have a rough figure for my application the previous year. So Gertrude, if you are there, please. Hello, Nas Gertrude. Hello. Hello, Donald. Maybe before you get to her, uh, maybe I can complete okay, because okay, I was okay, in the last fine, slide. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah, sorry yes. for the challenge. Yeah, so, uh, yes. Am I yes, audible? Sorry. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, welcome back. I'm sorry for the a little uh, technical hitch. Okay. Uh, probably, um, I'm sure you'll, you are summarizing up now. Yeah, sure. Okay, fine. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So I talked about uh, flexible, uh, very diverse opportunities. You can specialize in very many areas if you are practicing the USA. Flexible schedules. Um, when you start earning uh, big dollars, that is when you get experience. You may not need to work so many days to earn uh, good money to sustain yourself and, and to do your other things. That is where flexible schedules can come in. Now, there's another thing called travel nursing in the USA. This is where the dollars are. Of course, some people do not choose to do this because of family commitments and some other reasons. But there's a lot of money in travel nursing. Some of the salaries that uh, people are being paid, when we mention them, some people may think that it's a joke. And uh, these are real things. Touring the world, for those who want to tour, of course, uh, USA, 52 states, you can, uh, of course, there's a lot to see there. Canada is just next door. Uh, and of course, when you have that uh, passport, the American passport, uh, you can tour most of the countries with a lot of respect. Huge market. The moment you become a US RN, you have 360 million people, and you know uh, the services we provide as, as healthcare pr pr practitioners, they are needed by every person. So 360 million people are waiting for you if you become a US RN. And uh, family, of course, the moment you become a US RN, if things uh, remain as they are, uh, USA is a giant in terms of the economy. Jobs are so many. 
So you know that your children are secured. The, the future of your, your children is secured. So uh, that's my last slide. I think uh, I'm through. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Back to okay. you, Donna. So Thank you very much, uh, Humphrey. Mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids, and androgens. iPhone, eh? I was a sign of crystal glucocorticoids. Very beautiful, eh? Uh, kindly please mute. Uh, so I'm free if you could kindly please allow me to uh, mute people with their uh, host rights. So uh, we are at nine, it's already 9 11. I'm hoping it can be done by around 9 20 so that uh, we release people to do other things and prepare for the week. Now we've got a few questions in the, um, in the chat box. But before we go to the chat box, we have uh, notable people that I would like to recognize. We have senior nurses in our midst very senior nurses in, in Kenya that uh, have also attended this uh, meeting today or webinar, per se. And um, both senior and junior, we have got people who have just graduated into nursing and uh, they're joining the internship very soon. I knew uh, Mr. Alfredo Bengo, the, the National Nurses Association of Are you unmute and um, just give a word before we go to the Q&A. Uh, Mr. Alfred Obengo. Okay, fine. Then we'll move on to the Q and A. I'll be able to recognize uh, other other uh, senior nurses as uh, as we progress to the uh, during the webinar. And uh, one of the questions that came in that I had uh, requested uh, Nasgatu to reply on was the cost implication of uh, relocating from Kenya to UK. I know this is something that will be handled again in the in our coming webinars. This is the first out of four series that we are going to have. So make sure you tune in in the next four weeks because we are having today, this is week one, we are having four weeks of these webinars. So last year, I don't know if you would be able to tell us about the cost implications of um, relocating. That is a, a matter of um, how much that does um, IELTS cost, how much does NMCCBT cost, how much does um, the uh, X-ray and TB, uh, the TB test cost, and uh, how much um, uh, NMCCBT and any other cost that um, maybe we, we may need to incur. Um, okay, um, I'm going to talk in terms of estimates because I'm not really privy to the exact costs. So when it comes to the UK, as I mentioned before, you need about. 100,000 Kenya shillings, and that is to process um, the things from Kenya, because when you get to, after your interview, your visa application, your air ticket, all those are paid for by your employer. So you need about 100,000, starting with the IELTS, which is, um, no, let me start with the passport application, because you know, when you go to apply for passport, you pay about between 5,000 and 6,000 Kenya shillings. Um, to get your passport processed. So I think that's the first cost you're going to incur. Then for IELTS is roughly 27,000 now, Humphrey can confirm, um, 25. 29, 29, oh, wow, 29. Each year, by the each year, they increase the cost of IELTS because they normally increase it each year. So right now it's 29,000. Then NMCCBT and registration, um for the cbt it was about 80 pounds which is like 13 14 000 kenya shillings and then the nmc registration this is a cost that we didn't have to pay when i did my process but right now you have to pay it while you're still in kenya it's about it's no it, it, it's 153 pounds which translates to about 23 20 to 23 000 kenya shillings and then the tb x-ray that you do uh somewhere somewhere in kitusuri or lovington i think i've forgotten the the route is up is about twenty five thousand. um then for the visa application it's paid for so i think off the top of my head those are the amount of 
costs you're going to incur but roughly as i said it comes to about a hundred thousand kenya shillings and then this is before you include like if you um uh you you choose to go for IELTS training like with passcode or any other agency you choose to do it with you're going to cut additional costs for the IELTS training if you do IELTS more than once you're going to have to pay because the the problem with IELTS is that when you fail it you have to repeat the entire exam so you're going to pay it for the number of times you you do it so off the top of my head you need about a hundred thousand um if you pass IELTS on the first try again this is a cost that is spread out through a period of time it's not a one-off payment that you need at once so yeah you need to start budgeting and saving around once you make the decision just start budgeting and saving around towards each step okay thank you very much nurse gertrude i see somebody is really shocked uh a participant called galaxy a21 <laughs> He's saying or she's saying that yeah, by the end of the process, I'm broke. I believe some of these posts are reimbursed once you are in UK. Yeah. If I'm right, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm aware that there's some costs which are reimbursed, especially yeah. the cost on um, TB test and the cost on um, CB, NMC CBT. No, they usually reimburse for IELTS and CBT, but again, it depends with the agency you come with, and it's a process that you have to follow up. So. Um, to be fair, when you get to the UK, the cost becomes a bit insignificant, like you wouldn't feel the pinch. So some people choose not to follow up because, again, it's a process of calling the agency to pay you back. Some hospitals are very good. They'll pay you back immediately. So they reimburse um, IELTS and CBT. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Nasgatruda. I'm, I'm going to ask the next questions. And the next question, I'll request Mr. Uh, Nas Humphrey, because I believe all of us are nurses in this meeting, Nas Humphrey to, uh, to answer. And um, there's this question from Lina, who is saying that uh, USA seems to be a little bit difficult to go and work than uh, UK. Um, what are the reasons? And maybe because of the processes, are you able to somehow comment on that? Yes, Donald, I'm able to comment on that. I don't know um, uh, specifically what uh, the asker of the question thinks is the difficult, but uh, maybe it's because maybe it's the length, the length of time that uh, is involved. Uh, also, uh, the NCLEX RN exam, it's not very easy, but it is doable. Uh, maybe also in terms of um, the money implications. Of course, uh, much money is involved. But at the end of the day, people need to know that the UK, um, the UK process was, was also very hard. Actually, before 2019, the UK process, the amount of money to go to the UK was almost even more than uh, the money to go to the US. What happened after Brexit, the government of the UK made a lot of, um, um, I mean, uh, subsidizing to be able to get nurses globally because they could not get them uh, in the European economic areas they used to do before uh, Brexit. So what uh, people need to look at are the benefits or what comes with my investing in the process. For example, Donald, I want to give an example with IELTS. The IELTS exam, to do the IELTS exam, you need to pay 29,000 Kenya shillings right now. To train for the IELTS exam, as we are charging 10,000 for the online module. Others are charging uh, more or less. Now, if you check uh, with the international, some of the renowned international trainers, the amount of money they charge for the training, you will think it's crazy. As if you even go back now to our training, you ask yourself, between the training and the exam, what should cost more? If the exam is costing 29,000 and it's actually non-negotiable, you can't negotiate with the British Council. Uh, what should cost more, the exam or the training? So the training in Kenya should be costing something like 50,000. However, we have to consider our economy and our abilities. And some of these agencies, I can't say it's ours alone. They have an objective of helping nurses to be able to go outside this country. So people need to look at what will I get after investing my coin? 
what will you get after investing your efforts and your coins to go to the USA, to go to the UK? If Gertrude can tell us today, if you are in the UK and you are a nurse, you want a job, many agencies will be looking for you. In the USA today, if you are a nurse, you want a job, an agency or a hospital will actually pay you to sign up a job with them. I am saying this because I have friends who have done that, who have actually been paid to go and work with a hospital. So there is money for those who want money. There is adventure for those who want adventure. So yes, indeed, the process can be a bit difficult for the going to the USA, but you also need to ask yourself why uh, you need to go there. Again, there are some uh, nurses who, are, who want to go to the USA, but because the process is a bit longer and uh, it needs more money, they are choosing first of all to go to the UK. And then when they are in the UK, they con continue with the US process, which is possible. So uh, I, I also find it to be a very good pathway. Since going to the UK is easier right now, if you have some financial implications, or maybe you don't want to wait longer, you can go to the UK, practice there. Then if you want to go to the US, you can continue with the US process. But of course, you might go to the UK and find that it is a very nice country. The money is there, everything is there. Health is free, healthcare is free. Get through, maybe you could have mentioned that to those who are hearing that for the first time. And maybe you may not even continue to go to the USA. So please let us look at for what reason am I investing this money? If you want to go to the USA, the process right now, if you're doing the self-sponsored program, will cost you not less than 300,000 Kenyan shillings. But that is money you will get in less than one month when you go to the US, even when you are going with an agency. So seriously, can you fail to invest even 500,000 Kenyan shillings if you have it, if you have it? Because there are some people who have it. There are some people who are in uh, employment where they can save such kind of money. There are some people who have worked for some, so understand your situation, check your finances. If you cannot raise the, all the finances, at, at least try and raise the finances for the UK. You can go to the UK, continue with the US process. If you must go to the USA, it's not a must anyway. Even in the UK, the, uh, the opportunities are very nice and they're very good. I've done a lot of research about that. So I think that's all I can say about that, Donald. Uh, thank you very much, Nas Samfri. I think um, we should be closing in the next one minute. That um, the webinar, the meeting has been quite explorative and most of the questions have been answered. I know this is just one uh, session, one out of 12. Most of the questions which are being asked uh, probably will be asked in the second meeting and the third and the fourth meeting. So I really want to appreciate all of you. I have shared my contacts in the, um, uh, in the chat section. In case you need uh, the recording of this uh, webinar or this meeting, can you please WhatsApp me? I'll be able to send you the link. I'll have, uh, I want to call upon the two uh, presenters to give us a call to action, and I'll begin with uh, Nasa Gertrude. Can you give us a one-minute call to action, then hopefully we'll take over. Um, thank you very much, Donald. This has been um, a great opportunity. So for me, what my closing um, word is, like I mentioned before, um, the biggest thing you can do when you're thinking of working abroad is making the decision. And again, think about why you really want this because challenges are going to come in ways that you don't imagine. Um, you will see us people who are abroad posting the nice pictures. We rarely post the, 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 the sad parts, you know? So think about really you want to work abroad. Decision, making the decision is the first step. And I also had Humphrey saying that us, um, should I say um, Africans or Kenyans don't like investing in information. So we just like things, getting things for free, and getting handed things like we just like the easy way out, but it's a time where you have to invest in information, you have to invest in your progress. Um, when you're making the decision, even with the money, think about it as an investment. Don't think, think about what you will gain. So make the decision, invest in information, network and start, start the process. 
start the process. Um, as I close up, please follow me on World Class Nurse across all social media platforms. I'm on Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Uh, because for me, I believe there's more to life than money. And I believe in sharing the experience beside the, um, just the process of coming over. What are the emotions involved? What do you need to prepare? What do you need to pack when you want to travel? Those small things are the things we talked about we talk about in world classness, the small things that are the big things. So thank you much. Uh, thank you very much for the organizers and wishing everyone a good night. Back to you, Ronald. Thank you very much, Nash Gertrude, all the way from the United Kingdom. Uh, hopefully I'll come there soon. You know, you appear to not have money, anyhow, sour. Um, Nasa Humphrey, do you have a call to action? But as you are giving us a call to action, you can. I see you've shared your contacts in the chat box. Nasgatu, you can also share your contacts in the chat box. Then I'll be giving some closing uh, comments. Now that um, I've been I'm trying to look for Nas, uh, Mr. Alfred as we close up. Humphrey? Thank you very much, uh, Donald. I will be very brief. I want to say to our nurses who have joined us, thank you very much for joining. It's very important when you hear a webinar is uh, uh, being organized to join, to get information. Even if you're not planning to go outside, maybe you can help a colleague. It's really very important. As you all know, in our conditions of nursing in Kenya, we are in the process. And uh, actually, even like for the young nurses, I believe most of you have vowed to change the way nursing is done in our country. And uh, we are in the process. And I want to thank you even for attending the webinar. It's a very important uh, opportunity. Secondly, I will say this, if you want to go to the UK, stop asking many questions. If you have made the decision, take IELTS. IELTS is the main thing you, want to, you need to do to go to the UK. The moment you have done IELTS, some of those other things might be a bit smooth for you. So if you want to go to the US, um, that one you usually start the NCLEX process. You don't stop your things. You don't become very excited. You just do the process slowly by slowly. Uh, next, uh, passports. If you are planning to go practice nursing outside, start applying for your passport right very early. Sometimes it can take long because of many reasons. As I end, I would like to say that today, the world needs nurses. The world needs you. It is you to choose where to practice. And actually, the world has never been open for nurses as it is right now. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Nurse Humphrey. As you've said, the world needs nurses. I can actually confess right now I've got friends who are nurses in the United States of America. I have nurse friends who are in USA. I have friends who are nurses in Australia. So um, if you really want information, I've shared my number in the chat box. I've also shared my email in the chat box. Now, Samfri has also shared his, uh, his email and all contacts in the chat box. Can you please check the, contact, uh, the chat box for contacts? You will always be helped. We are here to help you and uh, to share information with you so that we empower you as nurses and especially young nurses to uh, achieve uh, career development and career progression. Meanwhile, this has been, has been a very informative session for all of us. Can you please uh, plug in your friends for our for next week's session? Uh, we'll be able to tell you the topic for next week so that we may be able to plug in and also um, listen more. I believe we do not have uh, any other question up to this end from our chat box. Otherwise, uh, this has been a very resourceful uh, session. Just from the chat box, uh, the comments I'm having is that um, don't forget your cradle land, even if you're focused to go to greener pastures, aim to change Kenya and also improve, improve health and health in Africa. God bless you. Thank you very much. Lina is saying, be blessed and happy new, happy 2022. Thank you very much, Lina. Uh, somebody else is saying, thank you, people. This was very informative. Thank you very much. Uh, Nurse Jess Brian is saying thank you. And I really, uh, most of the comments are on thank you and also appreciating the, the every, uh, everything. Again, I'd like to repeat this. I've shared my number in the chat box. If you need the, the recording of this meeting, kindly please WhatsApp me. 
I'll be able to share the link to this recording with you. If you have any other question, can you please inbox me my WhatsApp or message or call, simply call. I'll be able to share with you. Thank you very much for attending and have a good night. I guess we can all admit and say good night. Night. Good 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 night. Same time. Sunday, same time, 7 at p.m. Bye. Happy New Week. Happy New Week. Amela, you are smiling so much. <laughs> okay, I'm ending it in the next uh, five seconds. If you have something to say, five seconds. I see uh, five, thank, four. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.